and it's an even bigger win considering what did happen with Manchester City. With the fact that Manchester City beat Arsenal, their closest rivals in the title race this season, is drawing against Forest a moment where we saw them lose what they had in that control of that title race? Or is it too early to say that, given the fact that they do still have to meet Arsenal again? Talking about Manchester City now, yeah. correct? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, look, I've watched this game and, and it, you know, first and foremost, a, a team like Manchester City, after, after beating uh, Arsenal, absolutely has to get something, uh, you know, out of that game. It can draw points. Uh, but I looked at that game and my goodness, I mean, how many chances did they, did they have? Uh, you know, it, it's not how many you score, it's when you score. And that's where you have to look at Erling Holland because he had those, you know, two opportunities on the same play that he absolutely has to score. And once again, his numbers weren't good. And, and you have to say that, and I'm going to continue to say that because I don't care if he scores 40 goals. If Manchester City do not win the title, 40 goals from Erling Holland mean absolutely nothing. Zero. Zilch. Uh, what can we get out, out of that? Other than the fact that, you know, how do you not win when you have a player that scores that many goals? Uh, so you have those chances. But, you know, if I look at that that game, and I don't want to bore anybody with the statistics because everybody sees it. I mean, uh, you know, so many shots to almost none. Um, uh, but, you know, how many chances do, did they possibly have? I mean, Rodri Heather, that's got to be a goal. If you look at Laporte from, what, six yards out, Point blank, absolutely free, a great play in the air, straight into the arms of uh, basically uh, Kaylor Navas. I mean, so they've had, uh, you know, and I'm probably missing one or two chances uh, that they've had. So uh, how they didn't win it, I don't know, other than the fact that I promised you that I was going to bring Zinchenko and the fact that, that Manchester City have an issue at left, left back. And that's created... Look, probably by some players, maybe he went on principle, Pep Guardiola, but that's created by him. Simply... You know, I don't like when they play with three in the back. I think when they play with four in the back, it, it's it, it's much better for them. Uh, you know, they had Benjamin Mendy, who, as we all know, had you know had and has issues with the law. There's very little you can do about that. Zinchenko has been absolutely tremendous for Manchester City, and look what he does at Arsenal when he's moved on. Right, Cancelo, for whatever reason, it's not there. Maybe that's the principle. But Manchester City do not have a left back, and you know we can talk all we want about. You know, Bernardo Silva filling in, sort of like Zinchenko's doing at Arsenal. But that's not what you need. And, you know, you see the Nottingham Forest game. And, and by the way, if you don't think they've had an issue in the past, just look at this game against Nottingham Forest. First 15 minutes. I, I mean, everything that Nottingham Forest did was on that right side, left side of Manchester City. Uh, Morgan Gibbs-White was going there. Brennan Johnson was going there. And, you know, it's a big ask to, uh, for Grealish to come back and help. Laporte and Rodri on the goal. Two cones. I mean, two. I, I don't even know what they were doing because, uh, you know, Laporte kind of lets Brendan Johnson go by him, you know, and 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 jogs back, and Rodri just stood there. I don't know if he didn't want to take him down. Whatever the case. Yeah, beloved Rodri, you're criticizing him. On that goal, I mean, yeah. I mean, what's? I mean, he just stood there, did, did absolutely nothing. So, I mean, you know, defensively on that one play, yeah. I, I'm not going to, you know, criticize Rodri in general because he's. You know, take your pick between him and Casemiro, the best, uh, you know, in that league, if not in Europe, one of the best. Uh, uh, so not in general, players do make mistakes. But, you know, my point is mostly on that left hand side because it continues to be the is an issue. And it's an unbalanced team, a team that brought fullbacks back in the past to a great effect. Right. Kyle Walker, nowhere near his best, uh, by the way, on the other side. So that is an issue that was exposed by an average Nottingham Forest team. OK, so with what you've just said, I've got a couple of questions for you before we move on to talk about Chelsea, Yanish. Do this City side look like a title-winning side to you? Not as formidable, uh, for sure, as they have in the past. And I think that's been well documented. Uh, a team that um, uh, absolutely needs extra motivation. It's going to be interesting in the Champions League because I think that's going to be important, right? In, and I think they can grow from that, out, and I think it's going to be an issue. We can say that about uh, quite a few uh, teams, I suppose. Liverpool is one of them. Uh, their game against Real Madrid is going to be important uh, when it comes to Premier League uh, season, in my opinion. But same goes for Manchester City uh, uh, right now. So Manchester City, at any given moment, could be back to the best uh, uh, and absolutely can win it. But I'm not as convinced uh, this time around uh, as I've been in years past. So the, the Haaland problem, if we can call it that, how is it going to be solved? Is it those around him or does it come down to him or is it a little bit of each? I think it's a little bit of each. Uh, uh, look, 
you know, with Haaland, again, here we are. I don't want to have a knack at a player that, you know, that's, you know, his primar primarily, uh, primary job is to score goals because he does what he's asked for and what they paid for. Uh, but that can be a hindrance. And, and in my opinion, it continues to be because the problem with the problem I have with, with Haaland, that for me, he's a pure finisher. There is really, there's not much more to him. There really isn't. If you watch him closely, he almost, almost looks uncomfortable when he has to do something else. Even in the buildup, his technical ability in the tight spots, this is not the same. Look, I mean, Erling Haaland at this moment, and he's very young, I'll give you that, but he is nowhere near the likes of Harry Kane or Robert Lewandowski or maybe even Osimhen, although let's give him a little bit more time. Uh, you know, one season doesn't make a wonder. When it comes to the all-around play, it, it, he just isn't. It's not even close. Because if it was, if he was more mobile, if he was used to combine a little bit, if he was trusted to play in all these triangles, would have been at that level. And he's not trusted. He, he just isn't because he doesn't get involved. He doesn't drop back as much. He... He is not a player that the likes of, I don't know, uh, Bernardo Silva or even Kevin De Bruyne, he finds him but to finish, uh, finish goals. And I think teams are aware of that. They, they worry that he needs to be obviously covered in front of the goal. But I think in the buildup, he's not one of those players where you say, I absolutely have to be there because he can do something special. And if you look at the, the all-around game, you know, I mean, he was very young again, but I mean, he was scoring in Bundesliga, but still wasn't coming anywhere near Robert Lewandowski, was he, right? He still has time. So for everybody that's going crazy, I mean, he may still develop that. But watching him right now, all I can think of, he's a finisher. And, and the stats prove that. I mean, look at his every game. He barely touches the ball. He's barely involved. And this is not just one game, two games, three games, four games. It's like this every game. So somehow you have to find a way to use him a little bit better. As I've said, the width of Manchester United may be a problem because maybe if he saw more deliveries from wide areas, which I've mentioned, playing with the three, asking Grealish to defend a lot. On the other side, maybe uh, Kyle Walker not getting involved, not having Zinchenko going forward. I mean, Manchester United uh, uh, wide game was superior, in, uh, superior in, in years past to that of, of what we see right now. No hiding them. No All hiding right. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.